You're from outer space. No, I'm from Iowa. I only work in outer space. Another fine mess. Oh, yes, this is a great mission. Priority message from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. We have reports of an undetermined number of Elasi pirate ships in your sector. You are ordered to proceed to the Harlequin star system immediately and investigate. Starfleet out. Harlequin, eh? May I suggest we arm our weapons and raise shields now in case of trouble, Captain? That's a good raise idea, shield. Spock. Arm anyway, this weapons. is a... This is a great mission because we get to encounter one of our old friends from the actual Star Trek show, except he's not actually from the Star Trek show. Uh, I'll get to that in a moment. Let's see. No, don't fire phrases. Harlequin, what can we do with the computer? Harlequin, a Federation star system with two Class M worlds, both inhabited. Harlequin 3, Vardane, is an Earth colony that has been involved in controversy on more than one occasion. Harlequin 5, Aloysia, is a non-Federation world heavily influenced by Alasi pirates. Vardane, eh? That's where the Alassis come from. That doesn't sound good. So let's navigate to... Where shall we go? Harlequin. It's right, um, um... Here. We have arrived in Harlequin. Two we Elasi sure have. ships approaching the fact, Captain. I'm also picking up an ion trail from a small ship, probably a scout. It left the sector just as we arrived. It appears likely that we interrupted the pirate attack on the scout. Oh, from the we'll do that. Plane, sir. We'll show you what happens to those who come between us and our prey. Prepare to die! Preparing to die, sir! So, yeah, it's a good thing we had our shields up. Because, holy cow, we're getting shot at all the way. Okay, let's get rid of some of these guys here. Anyway, this is a fantastic mission because you get to actually have a couple of different possible... Would you stop shooting at me for, for a freaking second? Holy cow. Ah, there we go. You actually get to have several different options that you can make happen on this mission. So that's pretty cool. Oh, photon torpedoes in your face. Swing the Enterprise around like it's a big... <laughs> like it's a tugboat or something. Where are ya? Target analysis. Oh. That would be helpful. Ooh. Looks like he's heavily damaged now. Oops. No, I wanted your buddy there. Okay. Come on. Fire them phasers, man. This is the future. You have to lead your phasers. Take care of that guy. Ooh. Have an infinite number of torpedoes, though. Why aren't you? Ah. Head to head? Sure. Fire the torpedoes at you, and you are dead. The ion trail of the scout ship leads to the Harapin system, Captain. Harapin, eh? Up the subspace signal, sir. It's very weak. Uh oh. Enterprise? Is that you, Kirk? Friend Kirk. I can't believe they sent you to rescue me. <laughs> Voice. That sounds like. No, please say it isn't. I have a visual <laughs> signal now, sir. 
Are you ready? Help me, Peg. You've got to help me. I'm a <laughs> misunderstanding with the Alasi pa uh, traders. The traders. Uh, uh, they're out to kill me, Kirk. Fancy that. Fancy that. Oh, I just said that. You see, Kirk. <laughs> I sold my mud's miracle to Grimers in perfectly good faith. A little sideline work, you understand? Now they won't leave me alone. <laughs> no, they're tracking me again. I can't send coordinates. You have to come protect me. I'm a registered ship with the Federation. Mud out. So interesting bit of trivia here. His face is obscured because one of the terms of licensing from Paramount for Interplay to make this game was that they had to have the actor's permission to display their faces. And unfortunately, the actor who portrayed Harry Mudd, Roger Carmel, had passed away by this time. So this is why he's shown in only shadow, because they can't have him has have, have his permission. So that's an interesting bit of trivia why he shows up like that. I'm afraid his ship is registered, Captain, and regulations require we respond to his distress signal. Oh, Spock, of course. Whoops. Fire phases at nothing. Born shields, Captain. Disarming weapons. Oh, this bridge is all st staticky and everything. Okay. Computer analysis suggests 91.331% chance that the speaker was Harcourt Fenton Mudd. Harry to his friends. So is that a 91% chance that he's Harry or what? <laughs> uh, computer, hair, uh... Harappa, a star system whose fourth planet is the inhabited class M world Chameleon. Chameleon has long been dominated by Elasi pirates, but lately has been struggling to break free of their influence. Harappa, eh? I thought it, they said Harapan. Okay, whatever. Um, but... Mud. Harcourt Fenton. Harcourt Fenton, Harry, Mud is one of the most infamous criminals at large in the Federation. A notorious con artist and troublemaker. Mud has been imprisoned numerous times for petty crimes. While Mud is not considered physically dangerous, he is quite devious and often uses dangerous means to ensure the success of his schemes. Starfleet captains who encounter Harry Mud should be extremely wary. Well, that's putting it lightly, Mr. Er, ma'am, computer. <laughs> cool. Oh. Our ship is all broken and stuff. Okay, let's go to Hera Parappa, or wherever. That would be right next door, I suppose. And there is the derelict ship. Okay. I would very much like to see this alien ship, but the prospect of dealing with Harcourt Fenton Mud again gives me pause. The Harappan yeah, system you, is you and me both. With a neutron pulsar in the vicinity causing difficulties with our sensor readings, I was able to trace Mud's transmission to this derelict. Mm -hmm. So, our friend Harry is on board, no doubt. Can you tell me anything about the derelict vessel? There are six major subdivisions within the hull. All systems are down. There is, however, limited atmospheric integrity. The environment appears to be the result of a temporary save -a ship life support generator. Not exactly a reliable model, Captain. <laughs> save a ship. <laughs> We're being hailed by Mr. Mudd, sir. Oh, aren't we? Captain, you came. I'm touched. That's even got the little playful music from the Star Trek show. I just love this game so much. Hey, I have to be touched in the head to have anything to do with you. How's your lovely wife, Stella? Oh, Kirk! That was a dirty trick, Kirk. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be glad to know I let bygones be bygones. If the Enterprise will stand by and fend off any pirates, I'll just finish my salvage operations here and be out of your hair. 
Get out of my hair, eh? Computer records document that you filed notice that there was no salvageable value here, and that the ship was a common passenger tug. Oh, really? Did I say no value? Minimal, Captain. Minimal. I <laughs> promising when I filed the report. We both know my judgment isn't always perfect. Oh, yes. I would say your judgment yeah. is never perfect, Harry. Perhaps we should beam over and judge the situation for ourselves. Ah, oh, yeah, that isn't necessary, Kirk. I can handle... I mean... Harry, relax. We're old friends. We'll understand if things aren't picked up and looking neat. Kirk out. <laughs> Why don't you beam on over and say hello? So we're going to save, save here. Game. Replace previous. Let's see. Talk I would very spot. much like to see this. Yeah, he does that thing. Okay. What else can... I don't think there's anything else we can do. How do I get out of the... There we go. Our orders are to render whatever assistance we can, sir. Or her would say that. I don't have anything to do with Scotty right now. So! They have a replacement actor playing Harry Mudd. Interesting bit of Star Trek trivia. Harry Mudd Spock, was the only... Mr. Scott, you have the con. ...character in the original series to appear more than once besides the actual crew. Welcome, Captain Gurk! So glad you're here! The Elazi have been terrible trouble to me. There's that playful music well, again. Well, you're terrible trouble to me, Harry. Tell me what this is all about. I happened upon this ship not long ago, and dutifully registered as salvage, mind you. In the hold here, I discovered one of these devices in that box over there. When I tried one on a wall, it floated off the grease and dirt. Perfect for cleaning, near as I could see. I peddled a few of these Mud's Miracle Degrimers, and everything was going perfectly well. You don't say. And something went wrong, right? Actually, no, Doctor, not then. I'd started offering a few other little items I found. Mud's limited coffee substitute, a great little specialty item. Uh, lenses to affirm packaging, build your own telescope kits. Uh, the collection of novelty paints, things like that. All of a sudden, the Elazi pirates are asking for me in every quadrant, wanting to know where I'm getting my goods. What is a novelty paint, anyway? I see, Harry. Well, we'll look around here while the Enterprise remains close by. Look around all you like, Captain, but I'll be keeping an eye on you. I've registered this derelict as my salvage, and I don't want you running off with all my prizes. Uh -huh. Harry, as official representatives of the Federation and of Starfleet, we recognize your rights to legitimate salvage. Need I say more? I understand perfectly, Captain. You carry on, Captain. All right now! Save, Save again. This is Replace this is a really game. great Star Trek mission, actually, because you are there's no enemy objective or anything, and it's sort of non-linear. You just are boldly going to explore in all the cool ways that Star Trek is great. That I think it is seeking out new life and new civilizations. So. This is where we get to be in the more Star Trek y vein, as opposed to the previous missions, which are more linear go here and do this and solve this problem. So, this is pretty cool. It really gives you a sense of feeling like you're Captain Kirk in a situation. And, a, every, and given every situation doesn't have to have an antagonist or such, you know? Get what I'm saying? Okay. Talk to Kirk, my friend, when have I ever given you the slightest bit of trouble? There was the time that you tried to commandeer the Enterprise to sell wife to miners, and then there was the time <laughs> you stole the Enterprise to exchange us for androids who were holding you prisoner. <laughs> there have been a few minor misunderstandings. Don't push your luck, Harry. <laughs> 
It's a great time to explore all the dialogue options that we get here. What do I think? Why do I have the feeling that I'm about to have a bad day? Oh, Kirk, it's not that bad. Now that we're together... It was a rhetorical question, Harry. <laughs> rhetorical question. Jim, you can't seriously be thinking of helping Mud after all he's done. Bones, Federation law is clear on this. Federation law protects everyone, even Harry Mudd. It sure does. Yeah, and we all know how devoted I am to Federation law. We About sure do. As, much as the Klingons are devoted to pacifism. Ha 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 ha! Bones as snarky as ever. Given the past thing. record of Harry Mudd, Captain, I strongly recommend that you do not trust him. That's Mr. a good idea. Spock, whatever gave you that impression? I thought Vulcans were supposed to be logical. I am. Your record is that of a greedy, amoral, sociopathic fraud who preys upon human emotion, most notably gullibility. Oh! Now tell us what you really think, Spock. Well, Spock, I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> I've never been so insulted in all my life. Oh, we'll try to insult you further. What about this guy? So, you say you know how to break the gambling machines on Curlon 4? <laughs> it's a system that cost a gambler his life, boy. He crawled up to me and whispered it with his dying breath. And it can be yours for a mere 200 credits. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Mud. My mother didn't raise any fools in her family. Starfleet, you're all the same. No sense of adventure. No sense of adventure. Oh, that is so awesome. That is so cool. I actually haven't <laughs> actually haven't uh, gone through all these things. Okay, so we'll just look at the things that are around this area. What is that? There are shiny, multi-sided, spherical objects in this box. How do you have a multi-sided, spherical object? Like a soccer ball? What's in Odd this? Odd-looking contraption, small enough to hold in one hand. Okay. Let's have uh, Spock do some tricordering on things. Well, I wonder if what the tricorder says about Harry There's Mudd. nothing there requiring a ship's doctor. Oh, fine. Bones, you're no fun. He's fooling around in this thing. What is this? What is... Hmm. Why do I lost my tricorder? Tricorder. Oh. A small energy device with a flanged opening at the front, about the size of one's thumbnail. Okay. Interesting. I guess we have to use Spock or something. A use small Spock energy on this. Okay, fine. I just wanted to use the tricorder, man. These are computer memory transfer media, probably designed for use with the alien computer system. Hmm. We should probably get some of those, I bet. You fail to obtain anything. Well, just reach, be <laughs> reach between Spock's legs here. Oh, that sounds dirty. Done. Oh! Oh! <laughs> we'll just pretend that didn't happen. Ugh. Um, I'll grab some of these, I bet. Done. Okay. What are you doing in here? Tricorder this thing. Nothing to report, Captain. Okay. Nothing use... to report. No, stop that. Spock that! I fail to see the logic in that action, Captain. Fine, be that way. Can I get stuff you from here? To obtain... Hmm. It's not got an active thing, but it doesn't seem to be activated. Hmm. Some kind of stuff on the floor here. Done. I don't know what that was. Tricorder stuff on the floor. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. No? This lens about the size of one's thumbnail magnifies like a fine optical glass. Oh, a magnifying glass, eh? What do we do with these things? These two things fit together like they were made for each other. Oh, that's cool. 
Hmm. What do we do with our thingamajig here? I thought there was something else I could do here. Save. Save. Me, replace. Delete. Pre replace. Pre All right then. What else is there to look at in this area? Hmm. Use this thing on mud. Whoa! Well, now I think we know why the Alassi pirates were so interested in finding out where Mud was getting these. Kaboom! That's interesting. Boom! Let's do it again. Boom! Boom! Okay. <laughs> Some kind of explosives. Does he say anything different now? Kirk, my friend! There was the time. Perhaps the. Okay, oh, never mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Harry Mudd is mixing explosives with explosive other things. That's interesting. Save new game. Replace previous. Okay, which shall we go? We can go this way. Ooh, ominous music! This place looks dangerous and scary. What is An this? An piece of alien-looking machinery. Yeah, it sure is, isn't it? An elaborate piece of... That's also an elaborate thing. Two yellow triangular buttons. They sure are. What about this purple one? A red triangular one? button. Red? Purple. Whatever. These cylinders have fallen down from the rest. Cylinders, eh? What are these things? I kind of look like loading tubes or something. What do I, I wonder think? wonder what's happening on the Enterprise right now. Oh, it's always about the Enterprise, isn't take it? Good care of it, Jim. He has before. He sure I does. know, Bones. I wonder where that mud has gone. I wouldn't let him out of my sight. Mind you, I'm not too crazy about having him in my sight, either. <laughs> oh, Bones. It looks to me like these people knew how to defend themselves, Captain. That machinery in the middle of the room, however, is like nothing I recognize, and I thought I had seen just about everything. Yes, you could say that again, Most Bill. Most interesting technology, Captain. If the Alassi gets hold of this, they'll make Mud seem like a perfect caretaker by comparison. Ooh. Let's uh, start tricordering things. A Let's weapons delivery system. It appears to be an accessory tied directly to the alien equivalent of our ship's phasers and photon torpedoes. Interesting. The control panel has power running to it, Captain. Okay. Hmm. A weapons delivery system. Nope, that's the same thing. What else can we... Anything else we can track on? to be part of a loading system for the weapon. It is also fully functional. Trained in multiple techniques. Unique, Captain. I believe these are self-referencing packed quantum cartridges. What does that mean? Power boosters! Oh, I've read about those, but they're just theoretical. Evidently, these are more than theoretical, Lieutenant Bukert. The energy initially released is infinitesimally small, but boosts itself until the power finally released is comparable to our photon torpedoes. Oh, interesting. The technical journals discussing the possibilities indicated it would create a weapon of greater range than those we have now, if not a greater punch. The machinery to deliver these cartridges would be an engineering feat as well, Captain. Very interesting. The so control I, I panel has... Like this. Yep, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's save before save we start game. poking around things. Let's go and uh, use uh, Spock on the controls. Maybe? There you go. The device has finished loading, Captain. Well, it's loaded now. Now what do we A weapons there? delivery system. It appears to be... Let's fire the weapons, or maybe... Use the red button. I believe, Captain, that this weapon must be hooked up through the main weapons battery. 
Oh. However, I've already examined the weapons console, and the main weapons battery on this ship was completely destroyed in the action, which made her a derelict. Mr. Scott would have to go over this thoroughly, but I would recommend we try to take this weapon with us to the Enterprise. Sure. I don't think we should tinker with technology we don't understand, Spock, and I'm surprised you'd suggest such a thing. That's not a very Kirkian thing to say. I agree that we should take it aboard the Enterprise. I'll try to raise the ship. Kirk to Enterprise. Kirk to Enterprise. I don't think... I'll try to raise the ship. Kirk to Enterprise. Let's try to raise the ship. Uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. Hmm... I believe, Captain, that this... However, Mr. Scott... I don't think we should tinker... I agree that we should take it aboard the Enterprise. I don't think we should tinker with... What if we say the thing that's... Spock raises eyebrow. <laughs> yeah, that's not a very correct. I believe. Thing to do. Do. I don't think we should. I agree that we should take it aboard the Enterprise. I'll try to yeah, raise the ship. Yeah, let's do that. Kirk to Enterprise. Kirk to Enterprise. Oh. They're having problems with their emissions coils or whatever. Save okay. Nuclear. Replace previous. Well, we've thoroughly investigated this. Let's go here. Interesting. Did you hear that sound? It sounds like. Humpback whales. Hmm. I'm sure that will not be relevant ever. Are you religious, Jim? Is Harry Mudd a divine punishment for anything we did wrong? <laughs> I can't think of anything we did that was that bad. Hmm. Sometimes I wish I had become an archaeology professor instead of a Starfleet captain. Really? I don't think you really mean that, Jim. You look troubled, Captain. Sorry if I was bothering you. I was just silently cursing the day I met Harry Mudd. Huh. Captain, count your blessings. We haven't met any salt vampires or deranged computers, blood-draining clouds, cell-imploding sirens, Greek gods, or, or any of the other things that people keep telling me about in security. <laughs> There's not much I wouldn't do to not have to deal with mud. Oh, that's funny. Funny indeed. Okay. Look at this thing. What is Small this? Small containers of oddly colored liquids. Oddly colored liquids, eh? This seems to be the main monitoring station for the beds. Above it is some sort of dispensary. Dispensary, eh? Padded beds. inclines resembling a bed. I would imagine this to be some kind of sick bay. Save new game. Replace. Save before we start doing anything unusual. What can we do Nothing here? To report. Hmm. How about the medical tricorder? It would be interesting to analyze them back aboard the Enterprise, but these are probably vaccines, medicines, and research viruses. Do they pose any threat to us, Doctor? None seems likely to have any effect on human or Vulcan physiology. To be on the safe side, though, I wouldn't recommend taking a snootful from one of the capsules. Hmm. There's nothing there. Re Don't sound too excited, Bones. So can I try quarter this thing? Nothing imagine? to report, Cap. Hmm. Can we operate? You Spock on the I thing to see the Jim, these look like the capsules we might use in a hypo. I wouldn't recommend experimenting with them, though. Alien physiology or not, you can never be sure what unusual chemicals will do to the human body. Ha 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 ha! Yeah. I know about that. I fail to see the logic. Spock on bed! Okay. Can't do anything in here, I suppose. Let's go this way. Hmm. It's 
place looks interesting. What do We've you think? done quite well so far, Captain. In spite of Harry Mudd. Speak of the devil. Where is that little angel? Yeah, about that. So this mission has various scripting ways that it can go, so I'm gonna try to not uh, or try to get as many as possible, but maybe I don't I'm know. I'm speechless, Mr. Spock. Words cannot adequately describe this place. Really? Sure said a lot for being this speechless. This may have been their bridge, but this sure doesn't look like the Enterprise. It's all hexagonal and stuff. Boldly go where no man has gone before. We are here, Jim. Oh, Bones is charming as ever. Save new game. Replace. Let's see. We have all kinds of controls, that looks like. Look at the controls. A control console from which operators run the ship. Alright. A control console from... Also a control a console. A control console. Also a control console! Okay. What a this? control console from... Also a control console. What is this? You see a plain gray screen. Hmm, what's you this thing? You see a plain... Some kind of... Projector or something. What's, um... It appears to stuff? be a view screen. Much like the one on board the Enterprise. Hmm. What about the controls? What do you think of that, Spock? Evidently the alien's bridge. There's centralized control. A closer look may provide more information. Well, how much closer do you need to be? This is clearly the control center for the ship, Captain. I cannot deduce much information, but I do observe two things. Go, Go ahead. On, Mr. Spock. This station definitely is configured differently from the one beside me. Wow. This shouldn't be surprising after all there are two stations. That may be, Doctor. But if you'll recall, all the Enterprise's different stations link into the same computer network bank, and... What else can you determine at this stage, Mr. Spock? These people have a fixation for the number six, and even divisors and multiple cans thereof. Threes and twelves in particular. I believe this may be the necessary first clue to understanding the aliens. Oh. Okay. Sounds good to me. Can you do this anything over here? This station definitely is configured differently from the one beside. Okay, how about this one? This station definitely. All right. How about this, this station... one. Okay. Can't seem to do anything with these stations. Let's go over this way. Maybe. Ooh. This is a cool looking room. Looks like it's made out of uh, the remnants of an exploded 80s game show. <laughs> like blockbusters or something. Wow. Okay, well, let's uh, look around here. The sphere in the middle of this console appears to be some sort of control mechanism. Okie dokie. The data view screen is operational. The information selectors are controlled from the console platform. That makes sense. Oh, based on hexagons and everything. That is way cool. Let's, uh, talk to Spock. This is a major archaeological find, Captain. I believe the galaxy may actually have cause to thank Harry Mudd. Oh, bite your tongue, Mr. Nimoy. You can't be serious, Spock. It would be nice to think that after all the stunts that Harry has pulled, that he would do something right for a change. Okay. Yeah. This is like an alien computer from the alien times. This equipment's way out of my league, Jim. Well, that's okay. Captain, does this mean that I'm a part of a major archaeological discovery? You better sure believe, Lieutenant. I don't see why you're complaining about this mud guy. Who knows what advances we could get from all this knowledge? Ha <laughs> ha! This technology think? is unbelievable, Mr. Spock. I've never seen anything like it. 
It is indeed impressive, Captain. If I were capable of emotion, I would be in awe of this place. If I were capable of if emotion... If you're incapable of emotion, how do you know what awe is, Spock? Well, awe is the sound blaster configuration files. Never mind. <laughs> well, how about that? Save new game. All, Replace all the cool dialogue from the guys that you love from the show. Okay, what can we do here, though? Let's uh, start tricordering things, because the tricorder is awesome that way. This platform contains the control console for the ship's computer library. Data may be accessed by using this console. Okay. Apparently an information data screen, something like the display readers on the Enterprise. All right then. Well, how do we... Let's see. Let's use Spock on the thing. This seems to activate the ship's computer bank control node. Given the alien's predilection for multiples of three, it may be possible to use our tricorders to decipher the information carried in these data banks. That would be quite a find, Jim. This is an alien race unknown to us, and they are certain to have knowledge new to us. Were the Universal Translator available, this would be simple. Oh, but With it's the not. Enterprise out of range, that's not an option, Mr. Spock. What else can you do? I believe if Dr. McCoy and I conjoin our two tricorders, we may be able to process enough sample data to get a basic understanding of the alien's computer system. This will completely tie up both our tricorders for an extended amount of time, however. Let's conjoin the plot devices. Okay. Save and now I game. want to... Replace previous game. Now I want to save in a new spot. Whoops. Because there's various ways save that this... Game. Uh, let's boldly go again. There's various ways that you can have things happen here. Some of which involve Harry Mud, some of which don't. Okay, so use the, um... There's nothing there required. How do There's I... There's nothing there required. Use the uh, link tricorders. There you go. Both our tricorders are now working on basic processing of the alien's computer data system. The tricorders are not the equal of the Universal Translator, but we should be able to retrieve basic information and get an insight into their culture and life systems. I don't believe we could have gotten even this far had we not deduced their fixation on base six mathematics and aesthetics. Well, we are smart that way. The tricorders are again available for general use. The alien ship's computer data is now accessible from the ship's library. Okay. I believe I have downloaded enough information to our tricorders to enable operation of most of the ship's controls, Captain. That sounds cool. So, can we use Spock on the controls now? Not all topics will necessarily be available, Captain. Nor do I believe we can get full details on all data. The tricorders could only do so much processing. It would be worth our effort to locate the central data banks for delivery to the Corniforos Life Sciences University, I believe. All right. To say nothing of fulfilling our mandate to seek out new life and new civilizations. Where have I heard that before? I'm receiving data now, Captain. Most internal and external functions are controlled from the bridge. These include engineering, navigation, communications, and sensors. Weapons functions are controlled from the weapons room. You don't say! I found an entry on an experimental long-range weapon booster recently installed, named the Wyo's weapon. It does not alter the power of the primary weapon systems, but it does increase the range at which those weapons are effective. How about I that? I believe I can produce a picture of a member of their race, Captain. Oh, well, why don't you pull up our... their... Means, driver ID? Look at their well, physiology, how about that? Jim. I think this explains the Lachean's fascination with threes and sixes. 
Where'd you get Lachaine's from? It should be no surprise that physiology affects mind and behavior. I would say a six-fingered, six-eyed people would naturally develop their sciences and arts around base six numerical systems, just as I observed on the bridge. Hmm. Medical knowledge is comprehensive and lifespan is extended considerably over archaic expectations with maintenance of quality of life. Interesting data here about the six-eyed vision processing in the brain. Their eyesight must have been excellent and almost 300 degrees around. Wow, that's pretty impressive. How about that? Exploring new life and new civilizations. You could see nothing of note. That's not what Bones just said. Hmm. What else can we do now? Does the this is a major any? archaeological find. You can't be certain. It would be nice to think that after. Okay, it doesn't say anything else. I don't think there's anything else we can do here. I believe. I believe Spot. I have retrieved as much. There you go. As much data as we can. So let's see how Harry Mud can screw things up. Let's go over this way. Oh, that's the weapons bay. There's nothing we can do here, I don't believe. Uh oh! What are you doing, Harry Mud? Oh, I, c c Captain! Jim, that doesn't look good at all. Harry, let me take a look at you and check whether that had some deleterious effect. <laughs> You're all space aliens. You're little gray men from inside the hollow earth. You want to experiment on my body parts? Stay away from me! Uh, deleterious effects, huh? Deleterious effects. I guess I don't even need my tricorder to know that. You'll mind control me. Kidnap my children. Dissect my dog. Oh, not the if we dog. Can get him on one of the beds and get it active, I think he can be cured. Otherwise, he's likely to become increasingly violent. Stay away um, from me! And his head spins around in 360 degrees. Oh, that's weird and strange. Let's, uh, t -t 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 Let's save new game. Save a new game. Save a new game. Because we can do various things. <laughs> oh, it's phaser him! I don't think the phaser will have the usual effect, Captain. We'll have to think of something else. Yeah! Uh, I feel faster! Smarter! Strong enough to take you all on! You're really lizard men wearing human masks. His is coming off! <laughs> hmm. Must have been reading too much. I know David you for Ike. what you really are. I'll tell the whole world, and then where will you be? Um, sitting right here on the crazy ship. <laughs> Can I use the. Kill phaser! I don't think the f Yeah! Ah! Uh, we'll just vaporize him. Okay. <laughs> Medical tricorder. There requiring really? There's nothing there requiring. Oh, Bones, you're not useful. Do you say anything Are interesting? Are you religious, Jim? Is Harry Mud a. I can't think of it. Okay, they don't do anything else interesting, so we have to go ahead and use, um... Oh, we got one of those things. Maybe we should use one of those. Uh, we have to use... Spock on Harry Mud and do the Vulcan neck thing. Ugh! Just that easy. All yours now, Dr. McCoy. So, one of the funny things is you can actually just leave him there. <laughs> you don't actually have to um, do anything about Harry Mud. Look at Harcourt him. Fenton Mud, three of the most prominent psychologists in the galaxy, became famous by publishing case studies in sociopathy about him. Oh, he's famous, eh? <laughs> yeah, you don't actually have to recover him or repair him. Repair? That's not why 
you use words. Save new game. Replace okay, okay. replace. Oh dear. Save a new game. Okay. Let's see. Ah, uh, use the medical tricorder on him. Nothing there. Oh come on, Bones, do something useful. Use uh, the volatile bag. chemicals have evaporated over the time the derelict hung in space. I need to refill the capsule dispenser for the bed to activate and effect a cure on our friend Harry here. Okay, well, I'll do that. Use... Why would you want to do that? Oh, stop that. Use bones on I this certainly thing. see nothing there calling for a ship's doctor. No? It would be interesting to analyze. Do they pose any threat? None seems Oh, come on! What do I have to do? Use Spock? Spock does everything! I fail to see the lot. Jim, these look like the caps. Well... Jim, these look like the caps. I'm supposed to do something with Mr. Mud. I fail to see the logic. But I don't know what it is. Hmm... Come on, you have to do something. The volatile chemical. Yeah, the volatile chemical. I certainly. Okay, fine. It would be interesting. Do they pose none? Seem. Don't do anything. All right, we'll just leave them here, I guess. Let's play with the bridge controls, I suppose. There's all kinds of stuff you can do here. This All kinds is of different the ways. Station. With the limited understanding we now have of the library computer data, these controls can now be activated. Available are sensors, sensors, navigation, navigation, engineering. Yeah, I don't think we're going anywhere. In. Done. Done. What kind of sensors? The Enterprise is in combat with a number of Elasi pirate ships, half a parsec toward the neutron star sector. I read debris identifiable with the pirates, but they continue to harass the Enterprise. Oh, the Enterprise. Sensors. Navigation. The computer reports this ship is incapable of navigating anywhere at all without major repairs. We are definitely dead in space until the Enterprise returns, Captain. Oh, that sucks. Sensors. Navigation. Engineering. Engineering! The engine pods are damaged, but still generating power, Captain. More Sensors. power to the engines! Done. Okay, well, done. How about, uh, this console? This is the secondary station, with no. the sensor. No, the I didn't mean sensors. to stop that. Done. Sensor's done! You can use, uh, Captain Kirk on this control, I believe. Thanks to Sit the, the library chair. computer data, limited though it is, these primary controls give me access to Why is communications. Talking? Now Kirk is talking. Blue screen. Done. Communications. Done. That doesn't sound like Captain Kirk at all. Scotty, report. The Arashi pirates have been driven off, Captain. We have damage and injuries among the crew. We just arrived back here a few minutes ago, and we've been trying to raise you on the communicators. Well, we've been busy doing other things. The local things. star seems to be acting up. Will there be a problem with the transporter? I want you to beam up the landing party, and I also want you to lock onto and beam aboard an alien mechanism we came across. Sure we thing. Can Captain, no problem. At least right now, but the situation is only going to get worse. Are you ready to beam over now? No, we want to look around some more. We'll call you on this channel when we're ready. Yeah, you can just beam right yes, out. Bring us right home, now. Mr. Scott. No, I need to have a word with Harry Mudd before we go. No, we want to look around some more. We'll call you on this channel when we're ready. Yeah, let's look around some more. Up, oh, gotta get Thanks up to and <laughs> do it again. How screen. about the view screen? On. Oh, cool. I guess the universe looks about like it did the last time we saw it. Communication. Well, not too impressed. Done. Okay, then. The star field is the same one you saw from the bridge of the Enterprise, with the binary stars swinging... Mid 
majestically past each other. Binary stars swinging majestically past each other. Okay. Save new game. Replace previous I game. Probably. Delete. Not. Replace previous. Let's fully go playing. This is the first one. This is the alternate one. Okay. How about that? So, we can go talk to Harry Mudd before we leave, but let's go see what else is going on. Hmm. Is Harry Mudd still in his, uh, coma? Let's find out! Yeah. Why are we not... Hmm. It's supposed to be... What do I do? Hmm. Nothing that happens. On him. Of course not! That would be silly. Maybe if I get something... Oh! Why don't I do that? There we go. Now we have gotten a thing to inject Nothing happens. Harry Mudd with. Nothing happens. Um... Put the thing in this thing, I guess. The capsules slide into the machinery on the bed exactly as they're designed to. Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? I'm telling the program, our physiology is not the same as the alien's physiology. Don't want it to try to cure us of being human. Oh, that was Skynet's problem, wasn't that it? That wouldn't be too much to hope for, would it not, Doctor? <laughs> oh, Spock. Particularly when we're talking about Harry Mudd. Okay. Well, did it work? Save again. Save new game. Replace previous. Delete previous game. Hmm. Replace previous. Replace previous game. Okay. Those bones do something. I certainly I guess. see nothing there. Okay, Harry, you should start to feel better in a few minutes. Just lie there quietly until you feel like moving. <laughs> oh, give me something for this headache, Doc. A herd of Amali tree elephants landed behind my eyeballs and did a mating dance. Very descriptive. Okie dokie, we rescued Harry Mudd and saved him from himself. Save new game. Replace so previous that's cool. game. cool. So let's put that in our number one slot here. Because now that he's awake, he'll go and wander around and do things, I suppose. Let's see if we can make him do that. Why, Captain! There we go. I see you got this machine to work. I tried to get it up and running for the longest time. Help yourself, uh -oh. Knowledge is for everyone. Get away from that this instant, Harry, or I'll shoot you where you stand. <laughs> Help yourself, Harry. Knowledge is for everyone. Why, Kirk, I didn't think you had it in you. Thank you. Yeah? <laughs> I failed to see the lot. I failed to see the lot. Oh, come on. I failed to see... Use the control panel. I failed to see the logic. Well, I guess we have to walk away while he does his thing. <laughs> now he's gone. Data banks erased. Ha <laughs> ha! Here's our good friend Harry Mudd has crashed the main computers. I doubt if it was a very easy thing to manage. Spock, we're talking about Harry Mudd. He was probably trying to download it so he could sell it to the highest bidder. And instead, he wiped the memory. That knowledge was priceless. At least our life support system isn't dependent on the alien computer. I believe, Captain, that the basic functions of the ship remain, even now. 
This is the library module. The art, history, and cultural memory of the aliens are gone, but the mechanical Forever. processes of sickbay, engineering, and sensors continue to work. But their essence, their souls, are gone, Spock. Illogical, Captain. This race has been extinct for millennia. Ugh. Harry Mudd, you're a big jerk. He even took the guy off the view screen. This platform contains the control. Ha ha ha. What a big jerk he is. So let's not do that. Um, whoops. Maybe not that one. I don't remember where we were. Well, that's not good. Oh. You failed to obtain. Is he upright? Oh, oh, I forgot. Yeah, we healed him and he's now awake. Okay! Jeez. Walk away from Mr. Mud and he'll come back again. There's a different thing you can do with him. He shows up in the thing. Why, Captain! I see. Help yourself, Harry. Knowledge is for everyone. Get away from that this instant, Harry, or I'll shoot you where you stand. Whatever you say, Captain. Ah! Harry Mud! Oops! You imbecile! Mark, did you know what you just did? That knowledge was priceless, and you've just destroyed it forever! Wow! Really bringing out the anger in Dr. McCoy. Now can I phaser him? The consequences of such actions may be catastrophic. Ugh! Such a jerk! Kirk, look what you made me do! You and your clumsy star fleets. Oh, it's all f my fault. But don't you realize what you've done? That knowledge was irreplaceable. You just burned down the galactic equivalent of the Library of Alexandria. Millions of lives might have been saved by the knowledge that you destroyed. Holy crap. DeForest Kelly putting all of his emotion into well, that. here, Dr. McCoy. Don't blame me if Kirk's bellowing causes me to be a teeny bit clumsy. Teeny bit clumsy mud? You're a disgrace to the entire human race. And Shatner phones it in, as always! How dare you, Kirk! I have half a mind to sue you for defamation of character! Mr. Spock, Captain, I, I think Mr. Eyebrow. Mud looks like he's getting out of control. Kirk! Get this mess <laughs> down car away from me! I'm allergic to violence! At ease, Lieutenant. He's not worth it. Oh, can't beat him up. Wow! That was cool! I haven't actually done that before. Okay, so let's not do that though, because uh, we don't want to have the alien race exploded forever. So let's just go to the bridge. Let's go ahead and uh, get off of this ship now that we're done with it. But you see what I mean? It's a very cool Star trek -y episode. Thanks to library computer data, limited though it is, these primary controls give me access to... And I keep saying episode instead of mission, because it's such... It seems like an episode, doesn't it? This game is just so great! Communications. All right. New developments Let's hail the Enterprise. Sky. The Neutron Star is causing more and more problems, Captain. I would recommend beaming over at your earliest possible convenience. Yep. Later, Mr. Scott. Very well, bring us home, Mr. Scott. No, I need to have a word with Harry Mudd before we go. This is the dialogue option you want to choose. Captain Bring that guy over here before... I see you. I'm leaving soon and wanted to say thanks for the escort. Ta-ta! And I hope we never have to cross paths again, Captain. Uh, you and me Don't both. Don't rush off, Harry. There's still a few things we need to discuss. In such a hurry, 
and Stella said she was dropping everything to meet you here. <laughs> Don't rush off, Harry. There's still a few things we need to discuss. Yeah. He's selling high technology weapons to terrorists and known criminals. Well, that's kind of a high charge. Tell me why I shouldn't arrest you on the spot just on general principles. Because I am going to turn over a selection of samples to the Cornerforest Life Sciences University. There you go. Uh, of course. One of everything I've found here. Mm -hmm. Five of each. Captain! Two. Five. Remember, I could confiscate your entire stock as illegal goods. You might get it back through the courts in a few years. <laughs> in a few years. You drive a hard bargain, Captain. It's a deal. And you get the triumphant music because you have that's no what idea you have what a great do. bargain it is, Mud. I understand. <laughs> no problem. And you, Captain. Bring us home, Mr. Scott. So the guy who does Harry Mudd's voice does a really good impression of him. I really like it. And this is a great, fun mission where nobody gets hurt or exploded. Well, unless you do it the wrong way. Let's sit back for that witty banter. I read your report on the problems at Harapan and evaluate your performance at 92%. You and your crew received three commendation points. Oh, 92%? What did I forget to do? The top brass at Starfleet are impressed. Outstanding work, Jim. Huh. I wired in that alien contraption to the torpedo system. It should boost the ship's firepower, Captain. Thank you, Mr. Scott. I only wish you could wire Harry Mudd to a photon torpedo. While you were away, Captain, I made some travel arrangements that I thought you would approve of. Oh! Travel arrangements? I think you'll be happy to know that I've arranged for Stella Mudd to meet her long-lost husband on Starbase 7, sir. Oh, Uhura! You are so cool! Take us out of here, Mr. Sulu. Thank you for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, or subscribe. You can also interact with me on Twitter and Facebook at L1011WideBody. And if you'd like, you can pledge to sponsor me at patreon.com forward slash L1011WideBody.